Hello folks, this is David Hurley of EasyChessTips.com, your pub chess bluffer, reporting on the latest game that I've played uh, January 2021 between my regular online opponent, Dr. M, and, and, and me. And I was white and opened with 1d4. Now, in this game, what happens coming out of the opening is an imbalance is created between the knights and the and the bishops in which I am left with two bishops and my opponent is left with two knights. So I have two bishops and one knight. My opponent has two knights and one bishop. And once that happened, I was thinking about how to utilize my two bishops and my opponent did not utilize his two knights uh, to the best of their potential. And that led to uh, that, plus a couple of blunders, led to a victory for white. So in this video, what I really want to do is talk about um, how to think about your um, imbalance. Once an imbalance has been created, if it's uh, two bishops or two knights, there's things you should be thinking about. My analysis is fairly elementary. I'm not an expert player. But let's get on and see uh, what happened and how I thought about my imbalance and how my opponent did not think so clearly about his imbalance. We have here the Slav defense. It now um, transmogrifies into the semi-Slav. And then I play what is more of a Nimzo Indian style move here which actually played out rather well for me. Uh, the Nimzo Indian opening, by the way, is, um, again, it's, oh, yes, uh, white moves first. And, uh, 1d4, knight to f6, c3, e6. And then if you're happy to play into the Nimzo Indian, knight to, uh, knight to c3, and this bishop move here to b4, pinning the knight to the king, is the classic Nimzo Indian move. And um, what I would do next is something like this, perhaps one, one variation, black may attack like so. And I think it's called the Reshevsky variation. Um, White brings his second knight, his uh, G knight, to E2. Of course, uh, you don't need to say G because this knight is pinned, it can't move. So it's just knight to E2. And the idea is that if there is an exchange here, you, can, you have the option of uh, taking back with your knight, which preserves your pawn formation. Now, plenty of white players... Um, Plenty of players who play white against the Nimzo Indian are actually quite happy to end up with uh, a double pawn structure here. The whole argument in the Indo Nin Nimzo Indian, the Indo Nimzian, the Nimzo Indian is whether or not this uh, double pawn structure here is uh, a detriment for white or actually can be played to his advantage. Uh, anyway, that is did not happen in the game, but we had something of a Nimzo Indian structure appear, which, as I say, played. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Let's go back to the original, the original version. Is this going to be it? Okay, here we are. This is how our game went. So Slav, semi-Slav, a Nimzo Indian style knight move which just happened to be fortunate. I mean, oh, uh, my opponent played the Nimzo Indian style bishop out of a Slav defense. And so this knight is protected with my e2 knight. Um, next, we put the question to the bishop and my opponent responded by taking the knight and I took his bishop. So now we have this imbalance where white now has two bishops and black has two knights. So the ideal game for each player runs along different lines. If you have the two bishops, the bishop pair, 
then you should be looking at opening up the game. How can you open up the game to get your bishops moving on those diagonals, taking advantage of the quality of the pieces that you have? On the other hand, if you have a pair of knights, you should be looking at how you can keep the game more closed, um, prevent white, in this case white, prevent the player with the bishops from opening up the game and pushing your knights into nice little squares where they can cause maximum disruption. So you want to be looking at getting your knights into the game while holding, holding the position as tightly as possible. So a closed position is good for black, an open position is good for white. And bearing that in mind, I began to try and open up the game and get my bishops onto diagonals, um, whereas my opponent did not take advantage of his own imbalance, as we will see. So my opponent's move is a perfectly good move. It says uh, a6 is excellent. Um, however, and it says b6 is best, but thinking about now having the two knights against two bishops, I think you should start activating your knight, whether or not the... Oh, here we go. Bishop to d7 is best, and b6 is an alternative. So these two pawn moves are fine, but get your knight moving if you're the player with the two knights against two bishops after um, a minor piece exchange has taken place. So that's a little note there. You want to be looking to activate your knight if you have the two knights. That didn't happen. What we actually see is a reasonably good move. See, I immediately start activating my bishop. Um, as it says here, e2 is best, d3 is a perfectly good alternative. Um, in the queen's pawn opening, uh, especially if you're if you once you've played um, e6, uh, well, of course you'd have to play e6 or, or sorry e6 e3 or e4 or e4. Once you've opened up your king's pawn, once you've moved your king's pawn, you're always asking yourself whether the bishop is better on uh, e2 or uh, d3. So I moved it to uh, e2. So the bishop is all already on a nice open diagonal here and we're looking to further open up the game so one would expect one's opponent to go um, knight b to d7 a characteristic move at this stage in the game but in fact he doesn't he's moving the bishop um, which is okay it's not bad look it's not a blunder but it's not playing i mean this knight is now asleep this knight can't move anywhere and the bishop is still a bad bishop, stuck behind the pawn chain. I have one bad bishop. I have one now um, reasonably good bishop. So I'm keeping in mind, how can I open up the game for my bishops? Um, the computer doesn't like this move. But you see, I'm thinking about all the time opening up diagonals, opening up the game. It's probably not the best because it does give now black an opportunity to open up some space for his bishop. But never mind, um, on we go. I'm now restricting black's bishop move. And I'm also opening up this square here for my black bishop. That's the, those are the double points of this move. Uh, I'm looking at this juicy diagonal here for my bishop. That's where I want him to go. So how can I get my bishop up to um, a3? Castle, yeah, that's good. Here we go, preparing for my bishop to a3. Okay, we got the knight moving. Congrats, that's good. And looking at this pawn as a juicy morsel. Um, I think this works out fine for me. It's not the best order. Prob probably better to get the bishop behind the pawn first, preparing for a very nice double attack on the rook and the knight, although the knight can simply retreat to uh, e7 to cover both of those attacks or to defend against both of those attacks. Anyway, I charge in with the pawn, the knight moves, and I get my bishop up to where I want my bishop to go. 
Again, there may have been a better alternative, but the point is, even if there are better alternatives, I'm working with a plan. I've got something in mind, which is to open up the game for my two bishops. Um, and that is going ahead. I've now pinned the knight to the rook. No big problem for a player who's on his game, but, you know, these are all little benefits. The benefits of playing to your imbalance. Okay, so on we go. Get my castle, king castled. He tightens up. So yeah, this may the computer didn't like this move, but this move here, tightening up, tightening up the situation over here. I think that's correct. Um, having made this move, it tightens up the game. So two knights like these closed positions more than bishops do. However, my bishop is very happy on this nice diagonal. No problemo. Get my queen out. Another diagonal moving piece. Get the queen onto those diagonals too. This is a blunder. It's a, it's a pity when this kind of thing happens because I like my bishop. I like having the bishop pair, but I like rooks even more than I like bishops. I don't know where this knight is going. Uh, he's just gone out for a bit of a wander, a canter into no man's land, but it's the first blunder of the game. Goodbye, rook. So it's a great pity the knights were not used to their maximum uh, impact. But now, so now I've lost the two. I've lost the two bishops, but my opponent has lost the two. Uh, his double rooks, his two rooks. So now this imbalance moves on, and it moves on heavily in my advantage. I now have two rooks to one rook, and there's a juicy uh, open file here that I want to get my rook onto. So here we go. Get that, uh, kick the knight away if I can. Yeah, so I'm also, yeah, move up your knight, get your knight forward, perhaps swap off. Right now I have a material advantage, a small but significant material advantage of a bishop and a rook for a bishop and a knight. So I'm quite happy to start swapping off. Yeah, again, talking about diagonals, here's a very nice diagonal for my queen to look at. The computer's not particularly impressed. It thinks I should have gone straight for the swap off. That is a bit of a mistake. The queen should probably be on defensive duties. So I swap off. And I'm quite happy with this swap off. Obviously, uh, we're getting... Uh, it's moving more and more into my advantage as pieces come off the board. But also, this is now an unprotected bishop. So let's just reoccupy that file and put the bishop under a bit of pressure. Will the queen go back and defend the bishop? There is a blunder, a mistake. It's merely a mistake. That's very generous of, of chess.com. It is a mistake because I pick up another piece. So the we'll just play out the game. But um, this is what happens when you don't play to your when you don't play to the uh, potential of your pieces, and also as we all do, commit a blunder or two. I say we all do. At our level of play, it happens. And so now it's just a matter of how to bring the game to a cheerful conclusion. And that is the final blunder of the game. It's a blunder because it lets the queen in very easily. There's a pretty much a forced checkmate coming in. And that is it. So you see the point, the point of this little video is about the imbalance. When you've got two bishops or two knights, play to the potential of the pieces that you have on the board. Open up the game if you have bishops, keep it closed and get your knights into the game, causing mayhem if you have two knights. Okay, folks, hope you enjoyed that little video. That's all from me, David Hurley of EasyChessTips.com, your pub chess bluffer.